Madam President. The junior senator from South Carolina. Thank you, Madam President. I ask for a suspension of the quorum call. Without objection. Thank you, Madam President. Last Saturday, October the 7th, we saw evil personified. We saw the deadliest attack on the Jewish state since the Yom Kippur War. Over 1,400 dead Israelis. And for context, think of that. If that were America, it would be over 40,000 dead Americans. On top of that, Madam President, we've seen 30 Americans lose their lives because of the evil brought upon Israel. We saw Hamas, an evil terrorist organization, launch an unprecedented, unprovoked, undeniably devastating attack on the Jewish state. I can't think of anything more evil than the images that we saw coming out of Israel where grandmothers were taken captive, where babies were burned alive, and where babies were beheaded. For what reason? For what reason did we see the atrocities and the evil brought upon a people? Simply because they were Jews. Hamas, their goal is to eliminate the Jewish state. But that's not where they stop. They want to annihilate every single Jewish person on the planet with more than six million living here at home in America. But they go one step further. They despise Western democracy. They want the elimination, the annihilation of our entire way of life. Fighting that war with a single-minded focus is exactly what we should expect from the Jewish people, from the state of Israel, from the prime minister, prime minister Netanyahu. He needs to have a single-minded focus. But that is not the case because we have seen in the last 24 hours or so the emergence of a different kind of war that they now must fight. It is the war of misinformation. The disinformation, the misinformation war could be just as deadly, if not more deadly, than the actual attack we saw last Saturday, October the 7th. One might ask the question, why would I say that? Well, I would say that because immediately what we've seen since the devastation in Israel was Prime Minister Netanyahu sending the signal that they were coming into Gaza, giving people, Palestinians, a chance to find themselves out of harm's way. But the misinformation campaign takes a different turn, a different spin, a different direction. What it said was that the hospital strike was in fact carried out by Israel. That misinformation was carried in the New York Times, the AP, and other news outlets in America. That misinformation campaign caused a summit in Jordan to be canceled. It caused President Biden's meetings to be canceled. It caused protest at embassies around the globe. Our embassies around the world felt the devastation of misinformation, of lies signaling to the world that now Israel 
must fight a different kind of war at the exact same time that they have a proportional response, which is and should be wiping Hamas off the face of the map. We saw as a result of that misinformation war, Hezbollah mobilizing. We've seen very clearly an attempt to weaken Israel and their standing in the world. Devastation after devastation, and then on top of that, we see the emergence of another deadly counter. Rather than waiting for the facts, these outlets carried the Hamas narrative, carrying the narrative of an evil, lying terrorist organization. And on top of that, equally as devastating is to see the divide within the House of Representatives where the vast majority of Republicans and Democrats stand firm with our ally, Israel. But there are members in the squad who have decided to continue spreading the propaganda of Hamas. Congresswoman Tlaib has yet to delete the tweet that says, Israel just bombed the Baptist hospital, killing 500 Palestinians. Doctors, children, patients, just like that. Delete the tweet. We cannot have members of the United States Congress sending out and being an extension of the Hamas propaganda machine. It is despicable behavior from elected representatives of the greatest nation on God's green earth. Those members did not start their anti-Semitic comments on October the 8th. This started months and even years prior. There is a cancer that is metastasizing on the radical extreme left that has to be dealt with in America. I've said several times over the past several days that Psalms 122.6 is so important, that we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And those who do will prosper. There is no doubt in my heart, there is no doubt in my mind that we find ourselves living in dangerous times in this world. Conflicts in Eastern Europe, now conflicts in the Middle East, and real threats in the Indo-Pacific. We need American metal, we need American leadership, and we need it to be strong, defiant, clear, and undeniably the strongest force for good on the planet. It's one of the reasons why I made strong comments about the terrible decision, the unbelievable decision to release $6 billion for hostages. I said this during the Obama administration, that paying $400 million for hostages would make more Americans less safe abroad and raise the price on every head. And now, with $6 billion being paid to Iran, Iran being the chief funder of Hamas, after the attacks, Hamas thanks Iran for the help. We 
do not need an administration to be complicit with such challenging and evil attacks on the Jewish state. As one reason why I seek, Madam President, I seek consent to pass my legislation, the Solidify Iranian Sanctions Act. In 1996, we put in place sanctions on Iran. We did so in the sector of their energy sector, because we understood that causing pain, causing pain would be an important and necessary component of keeping Iran in its place to slow down, if not stop, the spread of terrorism. We had to act, and I'm thankful I'm thankful that in 1996 we did act. But that action is set to sunset. It is set to expire. We must keep those sanctions in place. Without any question. I look at the support I look at the support for my legislation. This legislation predates the attacks on the nation of Israel. This bill has the support from both sides of the aisle. It is a common sense step to make permanent the Iran Sanctions Act of 1996 and support comes from both sides of the aisle, including the only Jewish mother in the Senate, Senator Rosen. This is one of many steps we must take to restrain 